Ghosts be angry. What's up, everybody? Dex here. We are back with episode number 32, I believe it is, for uh, Suburban Paranormal. Guys, as always, don't forget, check us out. Cinescape.media. Hopefully a few more things coming in the works. It's been uh, a bit hectic lately for a lot of our hosts with lives and everything else. Everybody trying to get back to normal, but uh, hopefully we'll have some more for you soon. If not, anyway, I'm not going anywhere. I'm enjoying this. If you can see, I got a t-shirt made up that kind of had it for a little while but it's it needs it needs work <laughs> but um anyway guys i uh completely as always thank you for being here um everybody for listening on the podcast if you could go ahead jump over to youtube and join and subscribe there we got plenty of videos and pictures that we look at and it'd be nice for you guys to see what we're talking about um but as always we'll leave the links to the comment or um articles in the comments or uh video description below apologize um but anyway guys i apologize this video i know is a day late due to uh i was on vacation last week with the family went and checked out a possible place to go move and live we're not sure yet but one thing i did see while we were out there we we're out in dutch wonderland area in pennsylvania it's about lancaster uh, there was a ghost tour out there so i'm interested to go back and take that tour uh, maybe we'll get uh bill or maybe sean to uh come along or maybe somebody else, who knows. But uh, definitely want to go check it out and see how it is. If you've been there, let me know what you guys think. Um, but if not, hopefully we'll go, we'll catch something, you know, we'll share we'll share it all here. But uh, guys, let's go ahead, let's, uh, let's jump right into this here. Uh, show you what I got. So first thing, only got one story here from uh, some cryptozoology stuff. Um, but this is actually a little article here and it links to a video steve felt him this guy has been searching for nessie for 30 years now and lucky for him he is a free man and he's doing exactly as he says this is exactly the thing he loves doing more power to him but if you want there is this video i've gotten about halfway through it's about an hour long video about the diary of him looking for nessie um so it's interesting to watch video like i said it's it's a good hour long um, I've only gotten halfway through. I wanted to get this episode out, but I'm going to go ahead and finish it up once we uh, get done here. So definitely go check this out. Let me know what you guys think of it. Um, but, I mean, the guy's been searching for Nessie for 30 years. As he says, he's hoping he's going to be the one that provides that final proof that's like, Nessie's real, here's the actual proof. And, you know, I hope it's this guy or maybe someone similar to this guy that's dedicated so much time of their lives to finding the the Nessie creatures so again hopefully go check out the guy's video help him out in a way I guess and uh yeah but uh moving along like I said right in the beginning ghosts are angry there was two angry ghost stories back to back so I thought it was kind of interesting um the first one here you have a 21 year old out of England who um said they saw an entity while taking a shower bit of a perv that ghost or paranormal entity whatever they are but hey um apparently they've been seeing and have you know told people about a tall bold man uh that leaves one of the bedrooms now this is uh, a woman and her mother that have been seeing this they've actually asked friends and they've um had them also kind of you know reiterate the fact that they see the same thing um now they did have a recommendation for someone named uh, ian griffiths and it looks like he confirmed everything and he had you know helped the man pass on to the other side whether it's happened yet it remains to be seen i hope for their sakes that if they were being haunted by some malevolent spirit that this guy was able to help them out um, but the next one like i said interesting to find too so this one 
is a French couple and their children, but apparently they have uh, a unique way of dealing with it. Um, for the past month, apparently, they've all been sleeping outside on the balcony in a tent. Now, this one's over in France, and I'm guessing it should, they're saying it's getting louder, the dishes are making noises and things like that. I hope Ian Griffiths, maybe if these two can find each other, like, if that guy can go help these people out, because you and your kids should not be sleeping on a balcony. I mean, y'all need to take control. You <laughs> get your house back. Um, so hopefully somebody... I'm not sure if anybody in France actually listens to this, but if anybody in France is listening, they could maybe somehow try and get the hold of these people through some way. But I, I really hope that these people also can find some kind of peace and truth and get rid of this because that's really got to be no fun to deal with. Um, but to keep along with the ghost stories here, um, we'll jump over to StrangerTopic.com, the recent website we found that um, we've been using for pulling top stories here. So a gentleman who works in a morgue apparently said about a month ago now that... they were hearing voices coming from the freezer saying help me now one thing that struck me about this story is i feel like we don't get many morgue stories i know we shared the gentleman that i think has a TikTok that tells his stories but i feel like it's almost one of these things where do we just accept the fact that a morgue is going to have this happen so we don't report on it as much um but anyway i don't know if it was what kind of ghost was messing with this gentleman but apparently it was coming from the freezers. They were saying, help me. It did identify itself as Jacob. Now, what I would have liked to have seen or known was if this gentleman working in the morgue, if any one of those, if he looked to find out if any one of those bodies were an actual person named Jacob. Because that would have been even crazier to lend a little bit of, I don't know, something to the story. I really wish that was available. That doesn't. It doesn't say that, but I mean, I find it extremely interesting um, that one we don't get that many stories of people from the work, and two that it did identify itself. But I wish, I wish they would have checked to see if there was actually somebody already there named Jacob. But um. Last story we have here, and this one I found pretty pretty good too, um, another one on Stranger Topic. So this man claimed he had photographed a ghost after he had went to a medieval castle. Now, for those looking at home, you can see there is a figure above the steps that this gentleman took. Now, apparently, like well, from what you can see, it is part of a local legend of a monk and it's dressed in a black like cape and when you look at the picture you can see and one of the like it looks like it's got um like a sash going from its right shoulder so yeah so it's going from like its right shoulder and down um it's definitely the outline of a figure it does look like a you know a hooded robe excuse me it does look like a hooded robe um one thing i found interesting is when you're looking right here it doesn't look like it's got feet so it's definitely like ghost-like where it doesn't have feet. This thing is just hovering. Um, so now a, another gentleman, though, um, an investigator out in that area named Alan Tigwell had gone out there and tried to kind of debunk and see what he can find. And apparently um, he's also actually a demonologist. And he said this is a fascinating picture, or I'm sorry, a fantastic picture. Because when he went out there twice, he went in the morning and he went like later in the afternoon. There's nothing that would cause matrixing or anything along those lines that would have maybe been explainable for this photo. So he's he's saying this is a fantastic picture. And I mean, this is, if this is real, this is sure, sure is one hell of a picture. And like I said, when you look up this you know, cropped out picture, it doesn't look like it has legs. So, is this thing really just hovering there? Is this really that local legend that they're talking about? Because if so, holy crap. And, dude, 
if you're, I, I don't know if the gentleman that took the picture is ever going to see this, but I mean, I, the line, like you said, you showed your son and they thought you're crazy. I'm 100% expecting to have this when my kids get older. So I'm wondering how you dealt with it. <laughs> but um, it's definitely, definitely a good good picture and good evidence if it's real. Um, so we're going to jump right over to UFOs. And the first one here is a bit of a doozy um, because this one threw me off for a second. So when you look here, this one they're saying is the top secret Project Aurora, which is a blue triangular ship. They're saying it was spotted in a NASA photo. And this top photo, you can see this triangle. And you see an arm of what looks like a space shuttle, right? I kind of thought that was crazy to think there's no way NASA would leave something like this up, right? This blown up image, I, I don't know what the purpose was. You can't see nothing. It, it, it looks clearer in this picture than people trying to zoom in on it here. But here's the full photo. Now, they are not kidding that this is an actual NASA photo because here's a link to the NASA source. And guess what? Here it is. Here's the actual picture on NASA.gov in their image archive. So it's a real image. What this is, I do not know. Is this really the Project Aurora that they're talking about? Now, if you guys would be interested in a video about Project Aurora or any of these other kind of conspiracy theory, quote-unquote, I guess you could say, type videos, let me know. I I'll put some together, and, you know, we'll see how they go. But this is definitely, definitely an interesting one to me because it it's, it's, it's there. And this is an actual NASA photo, undoctored. Oh, the, unless you're talking to flat earthers but it's an undoctored photo from what it looks like of this and it's just sitting on the NASA website now I don't know but it's yeah it, it's it's definitely definitely interesting um, picture for sure um, so we're, we're gonna move along keeping with UFOs this Apparently a YouTuber, I guess, scanning around, because that's one of the things that do a lot of people do this, where you just scan around on Google Photos and see what you can find. Or I'm sorry, like Google Earth, and you can see what you can find. You can find all sorts of crazy stuff. Now, a gentleman seems to have found what he thinks is a UFO crash on a remote island. Now, if we look at this picture here, and this picture here, it looks like some close-ups of the wreck apparently it's on a super remote island and here it is it's called starbuck island here's a picture of it what's interesting to me is this looks like it was drug out of the water like you can see these lines now whether this is a high tide low tide situation i don't know um, but it's interesting that you can actually see the trail of where it looks like it was drug out of the water. Now, it does look like it's kind of half a ship in the sense of, like, here's your front part. And then this would, like, be towards the body, and then it's cut in half. But... I'm not too sure because you got these cracks in it, but I mean that could just be part of the wreck. But they're too they they seem a little too straight edged to be they're a bit straight edged to be possibly just from a wreck. So while it's definitely an interesting video, or I'm sorry, it's an interesting picture, I'm not a hundred percent sure if it's a UFO or not. But the photo itself, like I said, these photos are interesting because it does, again, show what looks like dragging um, from out of the water onto the shore. So I'm curious if anybody else has seen this one, what you guys also think of this. Um, 
I, I don't I don't know what to say. It's it's definitely an interesting interesting photo. So next, um, here's another one from a Strange Topic. Apparently, the NASA did just publish this on its website. Um, this one is from 1968, and it looks like just this long stick. And they're saying that this was a UFO flying over Asia. Nothing else other than, here's a thin blackish, we took the picture over such and such. And here it is, it's from 1968. Now, I tried to think what else could this be. If you can tell, this is definitely a, a, like an overhead shot of something th long. Could this be something that was on the lens of whatever took the photo? Sure. I, I don't know, but I'm curious if anybody, like a photographer, if you could look at this a little closer than maybe what I can see with my own eye. This looks blurry. This is more in focus. Could this be something that had landed on the the lens when it took the picture? And if so, it probably was very, very small. But because of the magnification on those lenses, I'm sure it blew it up to these, you know, crazy looking proportions. So it's interesting that NASA just randomly dumped this photo. Um... I just, it, it's really interesting. Like, why would NASA just randomly dump this picture? <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we're going to move to the next one. I got two more stories here, and then uh, we'll, we'll jump into something. Oof. Apologies, I just dropped the phone. Um, so, apparently, though, the UK has come out, and they don't care what the US have to say, and they're not going to be looking into it at all which i find interesting like just because the u.s releases a report now all of a sudden you just you don't feel impressed by it so you're not going to look into it i really i find this one interesting like did you really need to state no we're not we're not investigating I mean, I guess so if you're getting pressured, but is that really a smart idea? They're UK, like <laughs> what? What? There, there's things around here that are unexplained, and I'm pr I, like, I, I was pretty sure you've been talked to and you guys were on board, but now you're just like gonna push it to the side. I don't know. I just, I hope it doesn't bite you in the ass. Uh, but anyway, it, it's it, it's interesting to say the least. I'm curious what you guys think about you know the government, or or is this going to be one of those like we're not we're not doing nothing, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, and then you know they're turning around like you got this covered, like you, you, you we're still looking into this right. We're just we're just not telling anybody. We're the government. This is what we do. Ugh. Anyway, last one I got. <laughs> <laughs> I found this one interesting just because I've I've, I've had jokes with friends um, with the with the have cats that are and you know we always talk about them being aliens and there's pictures of like cats with aliens drawn inside them and controlling them so I found this one kind of funny that this is a declassified UFO file from Australia and the document which is 58 pages long. And it, it spans a good, um, I think it's 14-year uh, span with some different stories. And one of the snippets, apparently, it mentions right here, and I'll read it. Vehicles stalled in vicinity of brilliant, transparent, mushroom-shaped object having occupants with cat-like faces, a quadrangular protuberance underneath. Um... Yeah, I mean, we, we haven't really talked much about, I guess, what aliens would look like. I mean, are they looking just like us? Are they really little gray men? 
or are they apparently cat faced? The the cat faced one's a new one for me, and uh, we'll jump back over here. Being a cat faced alien, that one, that 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 one's new to me. But I mean, again, we really don't know, and that's you know, it's, we'll close this episode out. Kind of, I just just talking about this a little bit. We don't know, you know, what they are, what they're going to look like. If we ever come into contact with them, I mean, hopefully within our lifetime, I'd love to have that finally happen. Because that, that, that would just be another thing on the list of uh, things people, you know, maybe laughed at or made fun of most of us for how long now. And we can finally turn around and be like, ha ha, told you. Um, it, it would be a nice feeling, right? I mean, <laughs> getting ridiculed for how many years for believing in things like this. But, I mean, it comes with the territory. So, I'm curious, you know, or are we going to have, like, many different, you know, depending on how many different possible life forms there are and that we come in contact with. <laughs> and I know I've stated this once or twice before, maybe, maybe more. I think the Orville gets things correct in a sense where there could just be multiples. There could be others that look just like us, just like us regular humanoid people. We might run back into Neanderthals, you know, the people from how long ago. You know, we might get aliens that are green or gray or cat-like, apparently. Like, we might... We, we don't know. And I'm curious what people are thinking we're going to see. What are we going to get? And I mean, I guess another question to pose here is, if they showed up and looked like us, would it make it easier than if they showed up looking like a cat or gray or any other mixture of something crazy? You know, they go Spock ears or we have something. You know, what's, I mean, obviously, if there's some crazy, extremely formed figure, that's definitely going to upset a lot of people and freak out a lot of people. You will cause mass hysteria, possibly, with that. Which is almost why I don't blame the government if they ran into that, that that's not shared. Because... A lot of you people get freaked out over, like, your hair is in the wrong place. God forbid the government shows you an actual alien, you, you'd lose your damn mind. Like, we'd have absolute chaos and anarchy. Because immediately everybody would go doomsday like they're going to die tomorrow. But if they came out, and they were aliens, and they looked just exactly like humanoids... Would that make things easier? Would it make things easier for you as a person? Me, personally, I'll accept anything. And maybe that's just because I, we, myself and maybe others have the same thought. Because we've been waiting for so long. I don't care what it's going to look like. But, I mean, am I wrong? Like, do you guys think the same thing? Like, if there was an alien that came out that looked like some of the crazy shit we see in, like what men in black or independence day like if we saw that y'all lose your minds but if it showed up just looking like seth mcfarland popping out in the orville like hey like would y'all be cool with that like would that make things a lot better for you oh man anyway guys again thanks for always tuning in i hope you guys enjoyed these stories um like i mentioned before if you guys are interested in videos um, maybe just short little series explaining things like Project Blue Book or Paperclip or just things like that. I mean, I'm curious. I mean, there's been plenty of things out there, I know. But if you guys are curious uh, for me to put the video together myself, I'd be more than happy to do so. Just let me know in the comments below or if you have an idea for some other video, send it over to suburbanparanormal at gmail.com. Um, also, if you guys are interested in coming on the show and talking, definitely send an email as well. Um, 
I've reached out to a few people, they were interested, and then I haven't heard back, so I'm not really sure what happened there. Um, but I am trying to get more guests, I am trying to make the show more interactive, so if you guys have any other suggestions, again, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. But on that note, guys, I'm going to get out of here. I appreciate you as always, and I will see you again on the next one.